The sun's first rays flung wide the gates of dawn. The inhabitants of Redwall were already up and about. After breakfast, the abbot issued daily orders. All those not employed defending the abbey would husband the crops and gather in supplies for the larders in the event of a prolonged siege. Young otters collected watercress and fish. Cornflower headed a party of mice to reap the early cereal crops. More youngsters tended the salad gardens. The bright summer morning hummed to the bustle of industrious woodlanders. Ambrose Spike, now sufficiently recovered, sat in the storeroom taking stock. Lots of nuts and preserved berries from last autumn, apples and pears aplenty. Unfortunately, the hedgehog could not check the cellars. Brother Edmund and Friar Hugo had the only two keys. He licked his lips at the thought of barrels of nut-brown ale, strong cider, creamy stout, and the little kegs. Ah, the dear little kegs. Full of elderberry wine, mulberry brandy, black currant port, and wild grape cherry. Your edge big. Where am us a puttin' these roots and danny lines? It's enough, them right avy. Ambrose sighed wistfully as he attended the two moles staggering under a bundle of dandelions and tubers. Ah, hold them little taters steady, Bill. You're tip em up, let go. More baby moles. Ambrose pawed the bandage on his wound. The hedgehog's work was never done. Matthias and Constance stood in the cloisters. They had taken charge of weapon training. The woodlanders were each showing off their special skills. In more peaceful days, these skills had only been used at fairs and sporting contests. But now, when the need arose, they would be used with more deadly effect. The otters carried bags of smooth pebbles which they hurled from vine slings with great force and accuracy. Groups of field mouse archers knocked thistle down shafts to the strings of their long bows. Many a marauding bird had been driven off by these same tiny archers. Bands of red wall mice practiced at thrust and parry with staves. Below the wall on the abbey grass, Formal directed his crew as they dug a trench. This was lined with sharpened stakes by a solitary beaver. A system of ropes and pulleys carried the baskets of stone and trench debris up to the ramparts. The fenders piled it in heaps at the edge of the parapet. Matthias took a group of redwall mice to instruct in the use of the quarterstaff. He had discovered in himself a natural skill with a long ash pole. None of the mice had ever competed in any type of violent sport. They were awkward and timid. But as it was a personal choice between learning cudgel and wrestling from Constance, or a quarter staff from Matthias, to a mouse they had opted for the latter. Matthias found he had to be quite severe with them. Accordingly, he dealt out some hefty blows and hard falls to make the more timid souls angry enough to retaliate. Keep that head guarded, brother Anthony. Thwack. I warned you, brother. Now look out. I'm coming after you again. Thwack. No, no, don't just stand there, brother. Defend yourself. Hit out at me. Whack. Crack. This time, Matthias sat down hard, rubbing dazedly at his sore head. Constance chuckled. Well, Matthias, you've only yourself to blame. You asked Brother Anthony to hit out at you. And my word, he's certainly obliged. I'll have to recruit him for my cudgel class. He shows promise. Matthias stood up, smiling ruefully. He rested on his staff. Yes, he's very strong. I do wish that we had some real weapons of war. Swords and daggers and such like. We won't kill many rats with wooden staves. Maybe not, the badger replied. But you must remember that we are here to defend, not to attack or kill. Matthias threw down his staff. He took a dipper of water from an oaken pail, drinking deeply, then splashing the remains over his aching head. A wise observation, Constance. Will you try telling that to Clooney and his horde? See how far you get. Lunch that day was served out in the orchard. Matthias lined up with the other woodland creatures to collect his food. A bowl of fresh milk, a hunk of wheaten loaf, and some goat's milk cheese. Cornflour was serving. 
she gave matthias an extra large wedge of the cheese he rolled up the sleeve of his habit and pulled out the corner of her scarf look cornflower a very close friend gave me this last night she laughed at him get along and eat your lunch warrior mouse or i'll show you my deadly aim with a piece of this cheese strolling through the dappled shade of the orchard matthias sought out old methuselah slumping down beneath a damson tree the young mouse munched away at his lunch methuselah was sitting with his back against a tree his eyes closed in an apparent doze without opening them he addressed matthias how goes the practice war young stave master matthias watched some of the tiny ants carrying off his fallen bread crumbs as he answered as well as possible brother methuselah how are your studies coming along methuselah squinted over the top of his spectacles knowledge is a thing that one cannot have enough of it is the fruit of wisdom to be eaten carefully and digested fully unlike that lunch you are bolting down little friend matthias set his food to one side tell me what knowledge have you digested lately old one methuselah took a sip from matthias's milk bowl sometimes i think you have a very old head for such a young mouse what more do you wish to know about martin the warrior matthias looked surprised how did you know i was going to ask about martin methuselah wrinkled his nose how do the bee folk know there is pollen in a flower ask away young one before i doze off again matthias hesitated a moment then blurted out brother methuselah tell me where martin lies buried the old mouse chuckled dryly next you're going to ask me where to find the great sword of the warrior mouse but how did you know that stammered matthias the ancient gate housekeeper shrugged his thin shoulders the sword must lie buried with martin you would have little use for that dusty bones of a bygone hero a simple deduction even for one as old as i am then you know where the warrior lies methuselah shook his head that is a thing no creature knows for many long years now i have puzzled and pored over ancient manuscripts translating following hidden trails always with the same result nothing i have even used my gift to tongues speaking to the bees and others who can go into places too small for us but always it is the same rumors legends and old mouse tales matthias crumbled more bread for the ants then the warrior's sword is only a fable methuselah leaned forward indignantly who said that did i no but you bah nothing in the sort young mouse listen carefully to me i have an uncanny feeling that you may be the one i have been saving this vital piece of information for matthias forgot his lunch he listened attentively about four summers ago i treated a sparrow hawk who had pulled a sinew in her foot she could not use her talons properly as i remember i made her promise never to take a mouse's prey she was a fierce frightening bird have you ever been up close to a sparrow hawk no of course you haven't well let me tell you they can hypnotize small creatures with those savage golden eyes born killers they are but this hawk said something that made me think she talked to the sparrows called them winged mice Said that many years ago they had stolen something from our abbey a treasure that belonged to the mice wouldn't say what it was just flew off huh, who expects gratitude from a sparrow hawk anyway matthias interrupted have you ever spoken to the sparrows about this something methuselah shook his head i'm too old i can't climb up to the roof of their nest besides the sparrows are odd birds forever quarrelling and chattering on in their strange voices 
They are warlike creatures, extremely forgetful and completely savage. They'd throw you from the roof and kill you before you had a chance to get near their tribal nest. Yes, I'm far too old for that sort of thing, Matthias. And anyhow, I'm not too sure that the Sparrowhawk story was true. Some birds can be dreadful liars when they have a mind to be. Matthias tried questioning Brother Methuselah further, but the warm sun had worked its magic upon the old gatekeeper as he sat in the orchard savoring the peace and tranquility of a June afternoon. This time there was no deception. He was genuinely fast asleep.